Today, I'm going to talk about what we're going to be doing with this account going forward. Uh, yes, the community has spoken a bit. Uh, I've been playing a lot of standard lately, showing off some new Dominaria cards, and I had a really great time doing that. But we got to go back to our origins, and we've got to think about how to make this account really pop. As you can see, this is the free-to-play account. Our economy is not good. We only we have less than a th or five thousand coins. We can't even get into a draft. But we do have some dailies we need to do. I've been taking uh, some time away from this account and we are only at level 12 here. So we have some room to grab a bunch of free stuff. And they've actually added a lot more packs you could get, right? All the way through here, which is fantastic. Getting these extra packs is incredibly useful. Getting those extra cards is incredibly useful, right? We got a lot of room we could ma or make up for in here. But if we go into this right here we are going to look str strictly at standard and i'm going to show you how far away we are from completing the collection we don't have hardly anything in this account no brutal cathars right probably won't be able to get them in this account all the way up to scale a lot of the channels that you're going to see have a very very heavy 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 investment in the cards and for this specific account and what I kind of want to do leaning forward, we're not going to see a whole lot of that because we are going to be building this account up from scratch. Now, there is a strategy to move forward and to collect a lot of cards and be set up for the Brothers War, which is coming out sooner rather than later. We have to be prepared for the next sets coming out and the next and the next and the next. How are we going to do that? As you can see, right here, there are tons of events that are always going on in the arena. We have Sealed Dominaria. We have the Premier Draft Dominaria. We have the Traditional Sealed Draft. We have the Traditional Draft Dominaria United. Quick Drafts for Dominaria United. Jump in. And then a bunch of other events that follow up. But our focus isn't going to be on these today. Our focus is going to be on this top section right here. These are bad to buy. And there are multiple reasons why. And this actually kicks off the first segment of this video. The jump in event. This is going to be the first event you should do to start building out your collection. If you go to mtgazone.com which will be in the description below, you will find that you get a plethora of very strong rare cards in this event. We're gonna go over them right now and I'll tell you exactly what cards are gonna be there. And if you want, you can just go over to the website, see what cards are there and go from there. But if you think about a lot of the cards that are really making a mainstay, in the arena a lot of these cards can be acquired in the jump in event and the reason i like this event is for 1000 coins just 1000 coins you could get two rares or mythic cards in this event that is fantastic value so instead of spending 200 gems oh by the way don't spend gems on this so let me retract that just a little bit so instead of spending 1000 coins on one pack you could come over here and click this little button right here and you get options that allow you to actually get more value out of your cards we're gonna go with spooky here and i think we go with zombies on this one right we go with zombies because those have really good rares in them we're going to be going over that in a second right but check this out we get a Jader. Jader is a very useful card. And we also get, oh, where is he? Oh, no, we didn't get it. We got the other one. Yeah, we got the Mirror Hall Mimic, which uh, is pretty decent. I was really hoping to get the, the zombie guy, right? That grows when more zombies come out. I was really hoping to get that rare, but we did not. But this is still a card that starts to complete our collection. All the cards in here are standard and we'll talk about standard in just a moment but 
you could get two rares for the price of one rare, which is fantastic. It's really gonna help you build up your economy quite a bit and it gives you practice with the archetypes in uh, these matches as well. Whenever you join this event, you get a deck full of 40 cards, but about half of them are lands, 18 lands in a 40 card deck, which means you get 22 cards for doing this event. And anything extra from your profile goes into either vault progress, if they are common or uncommon, or they get converted into gems if they are rares that you have an excess amount of. So if you get a bad pack out of here, it's not to worry, right? I would have preferred more things from Dominaria just now, especially since this is a recording and, you know, it's all the hype. And that's going to be the new standard. And that's going to be moving into not this year, but next year's standard is going to start with Dominaria. So I really wanted to grab some Dominaria stuff, but I have plenty of opportunities to do that. We're going to get use out of um, these other things, the Jader and uh, the Mirror Hall Mimic for this year. So I'm happy with getting it. The problem with this event over time, though, is that you will have diminishing returns. And we're not talking about you can't do it more than five or six times. I would probably recommend for a brand new account starting from scratch, maybe 30, 35 events. Let's go over some of the cards that we could get. And we definitely want four copies of most cards. Again, this will be linked in the description below. But we're going to go over some of the best cards out there in Tricky. You get Jaya, Fire Negotiator. Very, very strong Planeswalker from a free-to-play point of view. I think she'd work really good in kind of a Goblin build. So she definitely has a place in Standard, though you don't see a whole lot of her um, at all, actually. But I actually think that the card has a lot of utility. I think people are really wrapped up in black right now, and we'll get to what black cards come in the set. But I think she's really good. In Wandering, we get the opportunity to get the Silverback Elder, which I think is a very, very powerful. Though, again, we haven't seen much of this. It is expensive. It does cost five mana to cast this guy but with green having mana ramp that that could be less of a big deal than originally thinking so on the surface right but you could destroy artifacts or enchantments if a creature enters a field or you look at the top five cards of your library put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tap put the rest on the bottom or you gain four life this is a very very interesting card to get right and it is Dominaria, and we will see that card for a long time. In fact, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of it than we have already. You could always get the Llanowar, uh Green Widow, but I'm not too dedicated to Domain quite yet, especially on a free-to-play account. You also get two very good aggro cards with Squee and the Shivan Devastator. Stater. And this is in the Stampede set. You get one of two rares with each set that you get. Recruits, you only get the Defiler of Faith. And I've seen much better cards. But moving on to Onslaught. Onslaught is mono black, of course. And you get two very interesting cards. One being the Raven Man, which I want to be good, but I don't think quite is. And then you also get another very good removal spell, very powerful removal spell in Liliana of the Veil. Moving on to Muscle, you can get the Guardians of New Banalia. I always try to say Banalia, kind of like a Bologna character, but you get the Guardians of Banalia. And this again is a very strong white card that works really great in mono white. And the list goes on and on with Braids, with Sarah Paragon, very strong card, the Haughty Jin, and so on and so forth. One of the things you have to watch out for is that you will get stuff from Alchemy whenever you draft Transience, Vitality, Warlock, etc., etc., oh, Saboteurs, of course etc 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 but all of the sets that will come out in magic the gathering arena will have something in here right again i'm linking what cards come in what packs down in the description below yeah 
I think this great uh, uh, event is great in order to get some of those very strong rares, especially the Banalia, as well as yeah, Braids is good, Liliana of the Veil, as well as the Haughty Jin. Sarah Paragon are the ones that we're really after in order to build out our set for standard right now. So we're going to want to start here. And now let's talk about standard a little bit. Why standard? Why are we upset that we get alchemy stuff? This is all that is happening in standard. Four sets come out for standard every single year. So the most you'll ever have is eight sets in standard right you are not competing with people that have all of this all this stuff that's just packed on top of the cards that they're already picking up from standard you only have to compete right now with five different sets and that's going to be very helpful going forward because you <laughs> You just have more opportunities to win. You have more opportunities to win because you don't have to compete with the Forgotten Realms, the Historic Anthologies, Kaladheim, uh, the Corsets here, the Strixhaven, Ixalan, Zinnikar's Rising, Ravnica's Allegiance, Rivals of Ixalan. You don't have to compete with all of that. All you have to compete with is Instagram Crimson Vow. Streets of New Capenna, Kamigawa, Midnight Hunt, and Dominaria United, and pretty soon the Brothers War. So, another thing to keep in mind is these awards here, the uncommons you get out of your daily wins, the mastery tree here, as well as almost all of the events lean towards standard. As you can see, Dominaria United, Dominaria United, Dominaria United, Dominaria United, Dominaria United, right? All of that stuff leans towards standard. And if we want to be able to join these events down in here, right, and get more cards, it's going to be easiest to do standard. And whenever things rotate away, those become the foundation of your historic play. Right, And we can and we will start getting historic content. But for now, we have to focus standard because that standard gives us the most opportunity to build our collection out and make a very strong foundation for all of our Magic the Gathering arena wants and needs. There's also an argument to make that we should probably stay away from alchemy because they changed the cards. In a free-to-play account, the economy is sacred, right? Like, look at our economy right now. Let's say that I use those seven mythic rares to make some Lilianas, and then they nerf her in the future. You don't get reimbursed those mythic rares. You don't get reimbursed at all, and it's just a real feels-bad moment for you, right? Um, where you lose the value you once thought was a given but they could change these cards and make them no longer playable, right? One little tweak to a card can make that card go from being overpowered to incredibly underpowered overnight. Yeah, the same can happen if they make certain cards illegal or they ban certain cards, like Oko, for example, when they banned Oko. But guess what? You got reimbursed those uh, wild cards. So it wasn't nearly as devastating as it could have been. It was much more devastating for those who bought Okos uh, in paper, right? That, those are the people that got hurt from that. But as things stand in the arena, you do get reimbursed those, uh, reimbursed those wild cards. Moving on to what we're doing when it comes to drafting. I would actually recommend from a free to play a point going into quick drafts of Dominary United and specifically drafting for value. Anytime you see a rare that you don't have in your collection, pick it up, get it, because that's one less pack that you have to buy. This event costs 5,000 to get into. You get three packs that you open, so you're guaranteed three rares right there, and you get one more in the extra pack you get at the end. So if you could pick up one more rare card 
right? You match the value of just buying packs as well as 50 gems on top of it. Chances are whenever you're quick drafting, the AIs that you're drafting against will very likely be choosing cards to help them win. So they're not prioritizing rares as much as you are. So I've had you know, value drafts that I've picked up nine, 10 rares. Eh, it's absolutely insane. That's like a $10,000 value for 5,000 gold. Very, very good. And along the way, depending on if you could actually get wins with the deck that you uh, have drafted. Sometimes whenever you're drafting for value, it doesn't necessarily work out in your favor when you're trying to win. But if you can pick up three wins and you get 300 gems and that one pack, you're converting your coins into gems. That's a very powerful indeed because you could come over to the store whenever you do that and look around for great values on things that you want to have in your collection. Like if you want these sleeves here, you can buy them with coins, but it's much more efficient to buy them with gems. And I wouldn't necessarily, uh, when you're first starting, work on cosmetics. I would be working specifically on stuff like this, where you get all of these cards and this will start to build out your historic collection even faster. Yes, it is 4,000 gems, but if you're converting your coins into gems through drafting or even jumping events, if you get excess rares, right? You are going to be able to do this very well, very, very well indeed. You're gonna be able to pick these up every once, once every blue moon whenever these offers happen. We don't want to be spending that. Another thing is when you are converting your coins into gems, you could join special events that take only gems to get into. And I'm talking specifically about the Sealed Dominaria United event. The only way into this event is with 2,000 gems. And yes, our time is starting to run short here. I almost guarantee I won't have enough time to do another Seal Dominaria event on this account. It is a real feels bad moment, but that is kind of, you know, the pickle that you come up on whenever, you know, uh, I'm trying to make Dominaria United content and this and that just simply ran out of time. But I like this event. I think it gives you the opportunity to get nine rare cards, right, for fair value, and then the ability to actually get deep discounts on that based off of the amount of wins you could get within the arena. Usually between four and five wins sounds pretty solid, but you don't have to draft for value here because you already get the value. You already get the six rares and that's all you're gonna get, right? The only reason I think this is good is because you could actually be just as competitive as your opponents who drafted to win rather than drafting for value. And then to finish everything off, once rotation happens and the cards from Kamigawa, Streets of New Capenna, and Instagrad go away, they become part of the historic archives of the game. And that is where you start to be able to compete in historic. At first, you're not gonna have a lot of cards to really kick it off and to do a lot but as things progress you'll be able to compete much more fully down here and you've already been playing the game for over a year to get those cards to rotate away you have a decent chunk of these specifically right and you're doing good and if you're drafting well and if you're doing really well with the sets you're going to have excess gems that you can then start to collect your historic cards. In fact, I would say that a lot of the times we're wanting to use these wild cards in historic. And yes, that means that we are kind of role playing, right? It's a lot of RNG to get the cards that you want, but it's kind of like in real life, right? You buy boxes, right? And you crack packs. And then you buy singles to fill out your collection and play the decks that you want to play. P doing it free to play takes a lot more time, but you can eventually grow your account and get everything you ever wanted. But it takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of strategy. 
and it takes a lot of skill. And my God, if you do things like this, your skills will grow substantially. As your collection grows, your skills as a player will also grow. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, if you guys want down below, make sure you like and subscribe first off. And if this video does really, really, really well, right? We're going to go into each of the things that we have just talked about and post videos on exactly what that's going to look like as we're going through. So starting with the jump in events, there are a lot of jump in cards that I want to get into this collection, specifically the Liliana, uh, the Vanilla, and the Sarah Paragon. I want four of each of those cards. I want to be doing this event and grabbing the extra win in order to get um, that extra uncommon card, which with as new as this account is, is actually a very pragmatic choice to get that extra card there. And we also need to get uh, our wins for the day, which is kind of tough with an account that's so young as this one. And we do need to cast blue and black spells. So that kind of works out perfectly that uh, we got the two packs that we did. We maybe get to do some zombie shenanigans a little bit later and uh, all that good stuff. So down in the comments below, let me know what draws you to the arena what makes you want to play on this client instead of playing paper magic and or do you play paper magic a lot of the times i'll use uh the client to build a deck and if the deck is fun and it works out i might buy it in singles i don't know how many people do that but i surely do i also like the idea of collecting cards let me know your reasons down below thank you for joining Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and until next time, this is Coffee Stout. Bye.